I'm reforming the last of these new old stock filter capacitors that I found. I mentioned in one of my earlier videos that the original capacitors, these Nishikons, tested okay when I used my simple ESR meter, but when I checked them for leakage current, they were a little high. We don't have the data sheets for these original capacitors, but Nishikon still makes 33,000 UF 100 volt rated capacitors. And based on those specifications, these should have less than five milliamps of leakage current. And leakage current is basically just the current that it takes to keep a capacitor charged at a rated voltage. So these are 100 volt capacitors. If I put 100 volts out of my power supply, they should take no more than five milliamps worth of power to stay charged at 100 volts. Now, these original capacitors were in the neighborhood of like three, three and a half, four thereabouts. And that's probably okay. Honestly, the ESR testing okay, the charge rate seemed to be okay. But again, like I mentioned one other time, this is the only chance I have to replace these things. I will never take this amplifier apart again. I don't know how long I'll have it for my own use. And I want to make sure it's in as good a condition as I can make it. So I elected to find new capacitors for this amplifier. And the values for these capacitors is actually pretty common. 33,000 UF. Uh, it, Nishikon actually makes brand new capacitors that are a perfect match for this amplifier. However, they are not the right size. And what's the limiting factor in this amplifier is actually the diameter of the capacitors. So the originals are around like two and a half inches and it seems like all the new ones I'm finding are three inch. And when you stack four of those in line, it's a little bit over 12 inches and the amplifier chassis has like 11 and 7 eighths, so they just won't fit. Even if I stagger them, and it gets to be pretty, pretty ugly. And I try to keep things looking as clean as possible when I do one of these restorations. So I did some digging on eBay, and I found a set of new old stock Panasonics with everything that I could possibly want other than they are about 20 years old. So these are 100 volts, 33,000 UF. They are the exact right diameter. They are a little bit shorter, and the threads are a little different, but I have adapters to make them work. Um, and they are new old stock. So I bought them off of eBay. They came from Europe, from a seller who seemed to be pretty legit and honest. And when I received them, they were still in the original packaging. And I could tell they weren't counterfeit right off the bat. I've received some capacitors in the past that were claimed to be like Chemicons or something really nice. But I mean, as soon as you picked it up, you knew it was nothing. <laughs> it was just some cheese ball Chinese part in a fancy wrapper. But this is uh, really cool. Panasonic capacitors used to be pretty popular in the restoration hobby. The FM and FC series, I think, were the ones that were most sought after for the audio files. And these are a GA series capacitor. And the part that I think is kind of neat, totally superficial, but they are the same color as, I think, the FM series, which was this neat navy blue color with the gold lettering. <laughs> I know. There's really no reason to worry about what color these are. You can't see them, um, but it is kind of cool. So I'm happy I found them. Now, one thing I've done, and every one of these capacitors, I've uh, slowly reformed by putting no more than like maybe one milliamp 
or no, excuse me, around like two milliamps worth of current into the capacitor while I slowly raise the voltage. It took a long time. Each capacitor takes around an hour and 20 minutes to form that way. And while I was doing that, I was trying to stay busy with other parts of this project, like working on the rear faceplate, um, starting to go through some of the components, just studying the schematic, which I have a whole video coming up on that because it's, it's wild. And while I was reforming them, I was really happy to see that the inrush current while the voltage rises, it should be pretty quick. Like you should have a large amount of current immediately, but then it should immediately die off and then slowly get down to zero again. And that's basically a time constant, if you will. And it's, they're working great. Once I get them to the rated voltage, I'm thrilled that the leakage current is under one milliamp. They're around like um, 0.25 milliamps. So 0.0002 milliamps or amps. And that's well below what the leakage current should be, which is under five. And it's less than, you know, a third of what the originals are. Here's a quick look at my test rig. And it's really nothing fancy at all. Uh, HP DC power supply. And this one goes clear up to 120 volts DC. That's why I'm using this one. I've got my old trusty Simpson up here for uh, reading the milliamps. Right now I have the scale set to 100 milliamps just because I'm bumping up the voltage in big, big uh, swings. But when I first reformed these, I kept it down in the 10 milliamp scale so I could really fine tune it. And then a voltmeter here, um, actually monitoring what the voltage is on a capacitor. I'm using a 100 ohm resistor back here as a uh, voltage divider current limiter, if you will. And that's what helps that time constant, right? As the voltage goes up, um, as the current goes up, the voltage you know, creeps. And then eventually, when it gets close, the current dips way down but never gets down to zero. And that 100 ohm resistor makes that happen for us. There's probably no other videos online about removing these amplifier boards from the chassis of the amplifier. The more I think about this, um, I'm, I'm really hoping that down the road, some repair technician or hobbyist is working on their Onkyo and they have a question about it and maybe they can reference these videos so they can learn from my um, experiences and hopefully no mistakes, but still that's the whole point so now in order to mount these capacitors on this board I have to remove the amplifiers like I mentioned before I was hoping to not do this until I was uh, finished with the power supply but I have no choice and I know I'm in the way of the video right now so just give me a second so these amplifiers, yeah, they're attached to this heat sink. And the heat sink is all one big piece of aluminum. And it's mounted to the chassis with four Phillips screws. And it's also electrically isolated from the chassis too. So once I get these off carefully, <laughs> carefully, there we are. We can see how it's built. Physically. Oh boy. So this is one channel <laughs> of the amplifier. And it weighs more than, uh, <laughs> you know, just about everything else out there. I'm going to go set this down and go over how everything else is assembled. And I might go over the layout of this card. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, still on the topic of main filter capacitors. I thought this was interesting. Um, 
the sales brochure for this amplifier specifically calls out how these capacitors are mounted. And while I take these apart, I'm going to read from the sales brochure because it cracks me up. Four capacitors of 33,000 UF 100 volts are used for the power supply section and a unique vibration isolation structure is used for fixing. This system takes note of the fact that sound changes depending on the position and material of the belt that fixes the condenser. <laughs> we have newly developed and used a unique fixing device that suppresses vibration caused by sound pressure. So I've never heard that before, that the material of the band that holds the capacitor will affect sound. That is a very interesting thought, one that I have never considered before. Is it possible? Sure, anything's possible. Is it likely to have an appreciable effect on the sound of the audio? Not really. Here's what they look like. Pretty stinking fancy. And here's what the... Wow, these are built exceedingly well. These are the uh, bands that hold the capacitors in. They have neat mounting brackets formed right into the plastic. And there's like a clamp for each pair for the upper and lower part of the capacitor. And let's see if I did this right. These should fit in here. Oh yeah, they're perfect. Perfect fit. All right, I don't want to slide them in until I'm ready because I got to clean this first. But these will basically be how the new capacitors are fixed inside of here. And finally, here's the rear face plate. Right now the cans are mounted up like this because they're so tall. But since the new ones are shorter, I need to drill new holes to slide this bracket down lower. This difference of about an inch will mean the terminals are at the same location for these. And just for fun, here's what my replacements look like next to the originals. Everything I'm doing is reversible. If anybody ever wanted to put it back to normal, they could. And having these original capacitors out of the amplifier means that a technician or a hobbyist could always uh, continually charge and discharge these and make sure they stay in good condition for a long time. Okay, I'm gonna get going on this part of the project. Well, this has been a long video about the filter capacitors and I'm gonna wrap it up here. So I've got the new ones installed here and I'm gonna walk through some of the other components I completed at this time which is the rear faceplate. And two cards on the back of this faceplate. One is obviously for all the main relays. Uh, system one speakers, system two speakers, and then some main relays right here. Um, there was really no reason to replace these. They're in excellent condition. The board shows no signs of any type of scorching or anything, so I left these just like you see them. I did install the new speaker terminals. WBTs is the brand for that. And then this is a uh, what I believe to be uh, the board for some of the protection logic and maybe some of the soft start. I don't know for sure because I'm still going through all the component layouts in this amplifier and that's going to be the next video. And speaking of that, here are some of the components I have laid out. But on that table in the back, that is the schematic for the amplifier. And I had a local print shop scan an original copy of the service manual that I found. And they blew up the schematic so I could actually see it and go through it. And in the next video, I plan on walking through the schematic at a super high level basically explaining how this is laid out physically and relay that back to the electronic side of things. It's 
somewhat straightforward, but really complex, if that makes sense. There's not a lot of electrolytic capacitors, but there's a ton of transistors. Um, some of the bias circuitry is really interesting. The protection circuits are wild. Thankfully, the service manual includes circuit descriptions for most of that. So understanding why it does what it does, like on the startup, for example, is uh, it's available in the service manual, and I plan on going through that in the next video. And then still in the back of my mind is um, maybe looking through this to start thinking about what could have caused that poor uh, test result when I first got this amplifier. I haven't mentioned it yet, but I did notice that there was some oscillation on the lower waveform while I was testing it. That could have been an artifact of my test procedure, and I'm going to be addressing that later on in this project. Or maybe it was, you know, a bias that was way too high, which would have explained why this thing was running so hot. All those things I'm going to be thinking about while I work through this schematic. So thanks for sticking around watching the saga with the main filter capacitors. I figured it was worth making an entire video about that topic just because there's so much debate around that. And um, hopefully the decisions I made um, will either give you a good reason to do it yourself when you're going to replace those capacitors, or maybe you totally disagree with why I did it. Either way, I'm uh, happy that you watched and I appreciate your time. If you have any questions, just let me know.